United States and China. I think one of the most highly publicized differences is in the United Nations Security Council, where the United States shares with, with China and with France and Great Britain and Russia the right to veto any resolution in the, in the uh, Security Council of the United Nations. And we have uh, a very uh, eager American policy of trying to have uh, United Nations decisions that tell other countries what to do inside. Sometimes it's very beneficial. Now we're trying to get Iran, for instance, to stop processing nuclear fuel. And in the past we tried to get um, uh, Sudan to stop abusing uh, the Darfurians and so forth. I, I don't mean to criticize the United States, but, but we insist on China joining with us in condemning the government of Iran or condemning the government of, of uh, Sudan, and the Chinese won't do it. And, and that causes uh, some argument and dissension and criticism among American political leaders and American people and news media of China. But, but China has, a, I think, an unalterable aversion to intruding in the internal affairs of another country. And the main reason is that China doesn't ever want the United Nations to intrude in the internal affairs of China in dealing with Taiwan, or in dealing with Tibet, or in dealing with the Uyghurs, and so forth. So th that's going to be a, uh, a permanent difference, which uh, could be serious on occasion, but which we have to accept. I, I can't envision in my lifetime China changing that policy, because that's a deeply ingrained uh, policy of the Chinese government leaders and their people. It is an irony of history, though, is it not, that uh, China, which is a people's republic and was once part of a global communist movement, is now defending, in the name of sovereignty and territorial integrity, a 17th century European construct and concept. And it's a very conservative one in a globalized world. So I guess this gets back again to how we understand our respective dynamics internally, because I sense that the Chinese youth are very nationalistic, very easy to be uh, aroused if they think we're interfering in the, their internal affairs or ours. I wonder if that impression that I have about the constraints on leaders in China due to a, 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 a grassroots concern about China's pride, to your point that this would go on, is in fact the right one. Is that, is that a concern? Chinese people really show great concern about the territory unification. Because ever since the uh, 1840 Opium War, China was uh, invaded or bullied by the other foreign countries, capitalist countries. So even some of the older people still remembered during the World War II time. So you know, in Shanghai, a lot of concessions because of all this you know, Opium War. And the big board they are saying Chinese and dogs are not allowed to get into the park. So they still remember this kind of uh, you know very sad and uh, terrible you know, memory. So that's uh, is kind of a we will talk about territory unification. So it's a very sensitive issue, not only for older generation but also for the young people. That's because I think from history we went through. But today we are very happy to see that uh, you know, the living standard of people being increased dramatically. And uh, now a lot of people think China now should take an even more important role in all these international issues. But we think we should study how to be a country, a big country, with responsibility. So we are weak in some, you know, like uh, you know, still we are not that uh, rich people think we are because of the Olympic and also our national day celebration. <laughs> However, we will see the people who live in the countryside or in the remote areas still have a lot of things to do. But we will see, generally speaking, our GDP grows very fast. Even this year, probably will be 8 point something percent. So it's kind of like a miracle thing. But we you know, still facing a tremendous challenge Especially when we talk about these international issues like climate changes, 
the global warmings, we should really be understand, uh, be notice that we are a country, a big country with such a big population, but we should be a big country with responsibility. We must work with other countries because one country cannot solve you know, global warming, this kind of uh, issue. You know, one of the interesting things that Rose and I noticed this past two, week, week before last, we happened to be in Vietnam. And uh, one of the things that Deng Xiaoping told me when he was in China, I mean, in the United States in uh, January of 79 was, uh, very secretly, just he and I and the interpreter there, I'm going to invade Vietnam. And I said, please don't do it. <laughs> uh, we've already had war with Vietnam, don't do it. He said, we have to teach Vietnam a lesson. And I said, well, how, how long are you going to stay in Vietnam? And he said, I don't know yet. I said, well, please make it brief. And he did. He, he was only there just for a couple of weeks, but he had to teach a lesson. But the uh, fact was that the president of Vietnam with whom we were meeting was very proud of the fact that they have good relationships now between Vietnam and China. And if you look down the list of all the uh, controversial nations in the world, China has good relationship with them all. China and Iran, China and Burma, China and Vietnam, China and North Korea. You can go down a long list. It would be hard to find any country on earth with which China does not presently have good diplomatic and trade relationships. I think we could learn some lessons in that respect because uh, a lot of those countries, we don't even speak to them. We don't even talk to them. We don't communicate with them. We don't try to resolve our differences through diplomacy. We are also learning, you know, changing our concepts, especially for our business people. We have an old Chinese saying, when you do business, we always say, Ni si wo wo. That means uh, you die, I live life, yes. <laughs> survive. Yeah. But today we try to learn win-win situation. So no party should be killed by, you know, whatever you do. We should try to find the you know, common interests and be beneficial from both sides. That's the way you really learn these kind of things. When you do business, you should let other people making money, and then you also make money. Be happy. That's something